Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Today, Intel's 12700K is a beast. Intel officially shows off Alder Lake, RX 7000 GPUs get a huge boost in ray tracing, the RTX 3090 Ti requires a new connector due to power draw, but it's just a starter to the massive power draw of Nvidia's RTX 4000 GPUs. And I'm announcing the winner of the RX 6800 GPU giveaway. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, we have a new benchmark on one of Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs, but this time it's of the 12700K instead of their 12900K, and it did really well. The story was originally found and shared by resident leaker Tom Apisak, and as you can see, it's a CPU Z benchmark. You can see right here that it's the 12700K, and according to this, it got a single core score of 800 points. That's 800. That beats every CPU that's out so far. Not only that, but it got a very impressive multi-core score of 9423.2. Now, that's a little bit under the Ryzen 9 5900X, which gets around 9500, but it handily beats the 5800X's multi-core score. Not only that, but this looks to be Windows 10, given CPU-Z doesn't have rounded corners here. And we know that Windows 11 provides better support for Alder Lake's big dot little type architecture, so it could be even better on Windows 11, though I'm not sure given this is a synthetic benchmark. Time, as always, will tell. But first, stop overpaying for your VPN. Stop it. Because you can get a fully fledged VPN service for just $1.39 a month with today's sponsor. Atlas VPN, the VPN that was developed by top cybersecurity specialists in 2020 to make secure internet accessible for everyone. And they've got it all. I'm talking encrypting all of your data, hiding your IP address, and even unblocking geo-restricted content from Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and more. So you can get hundreds of exclusive shows that are typically not available in your country. They even have a data breach monitoring tool where it scans the internet to see if your email has ever ended up in data dumps or data breaches. And you get all of that for just $1.39 a month for three years when you visit my link in the description. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so don't wait until this deal is gone. Next up for today, while on the topic of Intel's Alder Lake, the company finally showed off their 12th gen CPUs. In a new tweet from Intel's executive VP of their client group, Gregory Bryant, he stated, quote, Coming soon to PCs globally, hashtag 12th gen Intel Core processors. And he shared an image of someone holding up a couple of their 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs. And when we look closely, we can see that the design is very similar to the engineering samples that leaked a little while back proving that Intel's Alder Lake is one of the worst kept secrets in PC hardware. Still, it's nice to finally get a glimpse of the upcoming CPUs. Next up, it looks like AMD's RX 7000 GPUs are set to get some massive jumps in performance, even beyond regular FP32. In a new video from Red Gaming Tech, he states that AMD's RX 7000 GPUs are set to get their performance in teraflops roughly three times that of RDNA 2. Now, obviously that doesn't perfectly translate to gaming performance, but it's not irrelevant because it's comparing it to a similar architecture. For example, theoretical output isn't a great metric when comparing, say, NVIDIA to AMD cards because the actual gaming performance is far more dependent on the architecture itself. But when comparing it to the same company, it does give us a much better idea. Of course, with it being a new architecture here, it still won't be a perfect jump, but three times the compute performance is definitely huge. Not only that, but he mentioned that the ray tracing performance of AMD's next-gen RDNA 3 parts, i.e. RX 7000 or whatever it ends up being called, should be Ampere plus 1, which sounds like AMD could actually catch up to Nvidia's next-gen when it's released, meaning Nvidia may not have the ray tracing performance to fall back on for next-gen, so they'd better make sure they bring everything they've got. And speaking of NVIDIA, the company's RTX 3090 Ti is apparently on the way. In a new post from Video Cards, the upcoming flagship GPU is in fact set to be called the RTX 3090 Ti and not the RTX 3090 Super like we originally thought. Of course, if you remember, Copite 7 Kimmy recently did doubt the name of the 3090 Super, so that we more or less understood. 
When it comes to this, remember that Video Cards has a great track record for leaks, and they claim this information comes from the initial specs of the card given to board partners, so it should be fairly accurate. Either way, we first have the TDP, which apparently gets up to a whopping 450 watts. Yeah, that's 450 watts, which is a full 100 watts more than the regular 3090. Maybe that means we'll see a bigger performance jump than we originally thought? I will say that clocks haven't leaked yet, but regardless, I'll probably need a new power supply soon. That's for sure. And speaking of needing new things, the RTX 3090 Ti will apparently require a brand new power connector. Supposedly, it's meant to be the new standard for PCI Express Gen 5. They're not sure what it is exactly, but a 16-pin connector seems to be the best bet. And the news doesn't stop there. Video cards confirm the rumors we've been hearing on it coming with 21 gigabit per second memory. As for release, the RTX 3090 Ti is set to come in January. Of course, if you think the RTX 3090 Ti is a power hog, think again. In a new tweet from Graymon55, replying to the 3090 Ti story from video cards, he claims that the 450 watts here is just meant to get us ready for Nvidia's next-gen Lovelace. Of course, we've heard this before, with Lovelace set to get between 450 and 550 watts, but it looks like things could get even worse. In another reply, Graymon55 states that we could be looking at up to 600 watts. That's nearly double the RTX 3090. And don't forget how much power draw that was when compared to the 2000 series. We were hearing leaks and rumors prior to that, but this makes the 3000 series look like a joke. Of course, he could have just been kind of joking around there, but he's really been talking up the wattage for quite a while. This also makes sense of that new PSU connector of the 3090 Ti, but unlike the 3000 series, two 8-pin connectors won't cut it. Basically, we'll probably all need new power supplies with Nvidia's next gen. And lastly, I have the winner of my RX 6800 non-XT giveaway. The name is Nils Umilis in Latvia. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Either way, I'll be sending an email after this video drops, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. Oh, and a congratulations. For those who didn't win, I'll likely be doing more like this in the future, so make sure you're subscribed. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Nvidia's next gen or what about AMD's RX 7000 GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.